Yes, sir, you are on. Okay. Uh, so my name is Kaushtuk Bhagat and I work as an assistant professor with Tolani College of Commerce Autonomous. Uh, I teach environmental studies and foundation course as well as uh, travel and tourism. So these are a few of my topics as well as IKS or Indian knowledge systems. That's what I work with. So today's session is on our environment. Just give me a moment. So today's session is on our environment. Now in this particular session, I'm just sharing the screen with you. Uh, today we had a trail in the morning at uh, Ambili Biodiversity Park. Uh, so this is a follow-up session with uh, particularly this is a basic introductory session on what environment is all about. Uh, just a moment. I'm just sharing the screen. Just a moment. Okay. Is the screen visible to you all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just stopping the video right now because otherwise there would be a slight hindrance in at times, considering that the network speeds are often an issue. Right. So is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, just a basic question. I think everybody can, anybody can, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions in between. That is absolutely okay. If you at all you want to, or we can have a session at later. But uh, this, I would like to this session to be interactive. So, if there are any questions that I ask, feel free to unmute yourself and answer, right? Or we can even use the chat box option. But unfortunately, at this particular moment, I will not be able to see the chat box option, right? So. During this particular session, that is what we would be covering natural versus human environment, human made environment, biotic and abiotic factors, ecosystems, interactions and abiotic, uh, biotic and abiotic factors, seasons, weather, climate, weather and climate, and ecosystem services. These are six topics which we would be discussing during this particular presentation. Right? Uh, is that fine with you all? The whole outline, people? All right. So brings me to the question, what is environment? Anybody? Are people, am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Guys, please answer to what sir people, is Please feel free to answer. I know it, it's slightly this thing. What is environment? I know it's a Sunday evening. Thank you all for being there <laughs> on Sunday evening. But still, you know, if you can try and answer this session. Online sessions are usually something that you know people would be like, ha, log in karo ho gaya. I know. As a faculty member, I'm aware about the way people usually uh, work with online meetings. So any which way, what is environment? Your views. Yes, people. Guys, you can just unmute yourself and answer the question, whatever you feel like. Basically, our surroundings, the biotic and abiotic factors. Oh, cool. The living and non-living, basically. Living and non-living. So everything in your surroundings, right? So this uh, word environment, it, it's a, what do you call it? Gisipiti Purani Kaisete. It is derived from the French word environ. Now, how many alphabets in this word? The word environ basically in French means surroundings. Quick question, how many 
alphabets in this world? Seven. Seven, which is the central alphabet. I. So everything that surrounds me is my environment. As simple as that. If we just look at what the word environment is, this is one of the easiest way of remembering whoever that person is. You no, know, you might not be from uh, a science background or whatever. Right? The basic environment is basic, what I feel. Right? We should know about it. So, end of the day, human beings and environment are interconnected. Whether we like it or we don't like it. You know, we are a part of the environment. Um, okay. Is human being adaptable? Yes, people. Human being as a species, are they adaptable? Yeah, we are. Uh, in the sense, how? Like, we do inventions in technology. For example, okay. uh, combustion to the rising temperature and all. We are just uh, combat that we are placing ACs all over in our houses. So that we can acclimatize. Okay. Uh, we alter yeah. our surrounding instead of like animals or they make use of their surroundings to adapt to something. But yep. we as humans without changing ourselves, we change the surrounding. Yes. Sometimes. You, human beings once upon a time were highly adaptable. That is what we have reached our the state which we are today. Unfortunately, over the years, in the whole thing race that is called as development, we have lost that touch of adaptability. We are no longer adaptable. We do not we adapt ourselves to suit the environment. Nowadays, we adapt the environment to suit ourselves. There's a huge difference between the two. We try, we are not changing to suit the environment. We are changing the environment to suit us. You know, we may re go anywhere in the this thing. We would need an air conditioner if we go to a hot area. You would need a heater if you go to this thing. Previously, people used to use the natural resources around and try to be adapted. Look at animals. When you look at all the other animals, whether it is the bears, the birds, they their response is something to the environment, to the cues from the environment, right? So there's a difference between being adaptable and adapting something. We are no longer adaptive. Once upon a time, yes, we were highly adaptable. Today, we are not. We change the environment to suit ourselves. We don't change to suit the environment, right? Even look at our diet. We go anywhere. The diet that we eat at home, we want it over there, right? That is what we have, right? Moving further. OK, uh, before we move further, I would like to make a disclaimer. This is something that I do at the beginning of my presentations. I uh, somehow it slipped my mind. Now, whatever views I express during this presentations are purely mine. They do not agree with, they may not uh, go in sync with what my organization's views would be. So whatever uh, views that I air today are purely mine. That's the first disclaimer from my part. Uh, if at all, there are there I, any of the statements I do make uh, do hurt your sentiments, it will be purely unintentional. Most of the statements would be purely academic. So don't feel, uh, what do you call, offended by any of the statements. Uh, most, some of the statements may come as a cultural shock for a people, a group of a lot of people. Please don't uh, get offended. It's purely an academic exercise at my end. Right, moving further. So if you decide to classify environment, the basic classification of environment is natural environment and human-made environment. That is what we have today. So what set of environment did we go today to? People who had been for a nature walk. Was it a natural environment or was it a human made environment? It was a combination of both. Right. It was a combination of both. A part of it was natural. Yes, at the same time, you know, about the biodiversity part did have a lot of plants which were planted and were established over there. Nothing wrong in that. Let me be clear about this. So human environment and man-made environment sorry natural environment is also referred to as physical some of the textbooks also give you natural physical and human made environment so nothing much but uh, many of the times natural and physical fact environment are considered one and the same thing so these are naturally occurring that is not made by humans simple 
so mountains lakes rivers vegetation soil natural disasters all these are natural environment whereas artificial environment is made by humans the village town cities uh, housing colonies whatever you would call uh, interestingly what you also forget is agricultural fields though it appears to be natural they are human made right when we say natural disasters though we have today a lot of disasters are natural they are human induced as well so nowadays the classification is blurring over the years right uh, are we okay with what you have discussed so far i think this is just the basic problem most of you have gone through this thing since you were kids right uh, at least can somebody give me a reaction on the screen with a thumbs up or whatever it is that's absolutely fine if you don't want to unwish to unmute yes sir yes. <clears throat> so if you look at the components of environment again the basic components remain the same biotic and abiotic simple as that which are the living things animals plants microbes and non living things temperature ph humidity salinity all these are some of the non living factors sunlight soil living or non living yes people soil will be living right that's the fun part with the soil it is <laughs> it contains rocks and minerals and also contains mm -hmm. living and decaying material so it becomes both abiotic and biotic together the definition of soil itself is it's a dynamic mixture of living and non living uh, part right so that you know the we talk about integration this is one of the best examples of integrations probably today you know integrating stuff and everything probably soil you have got a mineral and a rock component and you have got a living component without these two uh you would say okay i would just have the living components in them or you will just have the rocks and minerals without independently they may not work together but combined they would function beautifully right so this was what probably you had studied since your school so these three together form your biotic components and that's the biosphere that forms your abiotic so atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere together form the bi abiotic components and the biosphere together is the biotic component which is the living component uh school wala session lag raha hai thoda right but it is, it is so that you know we are on par everybody i hope everybody is comfortable with the language that i am using or you want me to speak in other languages that's absolutely okay no sir we are good okay <coughs> So then there are three words that will always come across in environmental studies. That would be biomes, ecosystems, habitat. Are they the same, or are they different? Yes, people. Habitat, uh, media. Yes. They look like similar only like uh, bird may have a particular habitat, but uh, uh, fishes may require a particular ecosystem. Okay. So these three are different levels of strata, like uh, right. going up one level each time. So biomes okay. are the smallest, then the ecosystem, then the habitat. Or the lines will be blur at some time, but broadly it will be like. So let's look at the biomes, ecosystems, and habitat. Uh, though people often interchangeably use them, मतलब habitat को ecosystem बोलेंगे, ecosystem को biomes बोलेंगे, biomes को ecosystem, and whole lot of things. They are three distinct standalone things, right? The, uh, though it may appear that the lines are blurring, but if you know what they exactly stand for, it becomes easier to understand. Biome is supposed to be a large region of the world with similar plants and animals and other organisms that have adapted to the terrain or the weather. Like you would say, a desert biome, right? So it is more or less the temperature conditions, the terrain, and everything. It is similar, right? So what's a desert? Desert. 
is a habit. No, what do you mean by word desert with a single S? <laughs> desert is uh, anything uh, means it is lack of water. water. Uh, no, but, hot but, desert is also there and cold desert is also there. Yes. Lack of water. Lack of water. Achha. So basically, okay, let's look at the next part. Um, in ecosystem, there's an interaction of plants and animals with the abiotic factors with one uh, another, and this constitutes an ecosystem. Sir, is maybe yehi ho hai. Desert biome maybe yehi ho hai, no? Sahara desert or Thar desert would become an ecosystem. Biome desert hai, because conditions similar hai. Right, then the biggest thing of uh, what you call desert when we say desert, most people think about uh, sand, people would think about uh, hot temperatures, extreme temperatures. Yes, the temperatures are extreme, but desert is usually absence of water, xeric condition. Absence of water could be because of extreme heat, it could be because of extreme freezing cold. Le Ladakh or Antarctica is an are example of cold deserts, as he rightly somebody rightly pointed out. Right? So you can have deserts, uh, desert, Sahara desert, Thar desert become an ecosystem in itself. Right. Now again, ecosystem can be as small as, as large. Again, okay. Habitat is a place that provides food, shelter, water for the organisms that live within it. Example, sand dunes or dunes or oases. Now, within desert, there will be small habitats. There will be small pockets. You might have a small grass patch, which would provide refuge or habitat, uh, shelter, food, and water for some group of organisms. The sand dunes would form another kind of habitat. Oasis, the water as well as the border would form another this thing. A little distance away from what oasis would be another habitat. So each organism would adapt to an ecosystem. Or to an habitat, right? Are we clear now? Yes, people. Yes, sir. So yes, it, the as we uh, people somebody rightly pointed out, the lines can be blur, but if we keep these basic distinctions in place, it makes life easier. That is what I've understood over the years. See. In desert bi biome, you have the same kind of thing. Sahara desert, the habitat is totally, uh, you know, it has the same kind of extreme weather. Uh, the, it's hot in the mornings uh, or other in the afternoons during, during the day and night time. It's almost kind of freezing. That's one extreme uh, are there. The, there's a the lack of water. You have the sand. Same is true with true uh, for Thar desert as well. But look at the animal species and other things. They are totally different. They may be different, right? You would have different species out there interactions coming into the interactions may be like slightly different then you have the habitat become coming into picture which is about you know the same place that same ecosystem thar desert may have multiple of these habitats right so when we talk about forest ecosystem you may have look at any tiger reserve forest ecosystem bolte, but you would have uh, open land like we had been today we saw certain plants which are open certain plants had slopes Certain plants uh, parts had plantation. Certain parts were natural forest. Each organisms, each thing would adapt and would uh, uh, rather what they would get from it, whether it is food, water, or shelter. That is what makes it a habitat. Right. So if you look at the types of ecosystem, this is very basic that we have done ecosystems. You have terrestrial or land based. So it, it can be natural like sand dunes or artificial like agricultural field ecosystem in itself. Aquatic, here you may have natural, marine, where it could be coral reefs or freshwater like rivers. Artificial again could have marine. Any example of marine artificial uh, ecosystems? An aquarium, probably. Yes, a marine aquarium would be a good example or mar uh, aquaculture ponds to that matter. Where you have those uh, prawn farming or anything. I mean, these are artificial habitats which are cre cre created. Or you could have fresh water like an aquarium, the freshwater aquarium. Right. Of course, we do have marine aquariums as well. Right. 
probably most of you for this is a basic part that we have been talking about but this is so that everybody you know these are the basic things we need to know as a naturalist right because the further you get into it there are uh, you need to relate to things as well you know one of the best uh, things to remember probably a uh, way to remember things it's watch movies right we may not remember what we have read but we remember the movies very well finding nemo is probably one of the best movie to understand uh, aquatic habitats especially marine habitats so where you have uh, nemo being born and everything that's a coral reefs right you move further when he gets uh, kidnapped or other fish nap uh, and uh, his father follows him he follows him into an open ocean they uh, speak about it speaks about the uh, what you call gaps in the uh, landscape or water contrast trenches uh, in it walking through the trenches walking about the uh, swimming through the trenches swimming above the trenches uh, there are ocean currents that talk speaks it speaks about right finally it talks about an aquarium which is uh, for where, where uh, nemo is released right so that is what end of the day it talks a lot about the ecosystems right uh, are we okay with what we have discussed so far yes sir uh, i think gaurav has some question yeah gaurav if you can if somebody can read it yeah out. i have a question yeah right yeah. so in geography when we learned about this uh, tropical or arctic or taiga or tundra region so what are they those are like there's a combination of habitats and ecosystems or a much broader scale there so geographically when we look at different latitudes or altitudes you do get i don't it's hello am i audible yeah you are audible but uh yeah i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry i think i lost my network connection really sorry just give me a moment please. yeah gaurav sorry no, no, no. yeah i was asking yeah, in geography when we look at uh, tropical regions or taiga regions tundra region or arctic regions so yeah. what are those basically only on geographic or are they combination on this habitat yeah. system uh, the, these were you know when we much uh, larger as in there yes so yeah. when we uh, discussed about these uh, uh, what do you call biogeographic regions they are now called as biogeographic biomes okay. they are no longer previously they will be called bi geographical biomes oh. <laughs> today the right term for them is biogeographic biomes right right uh, there once upon a times things were compartmentalized for the ease of study you would have studied bio uh, I, i discussed this in the morning where you know we had zoology botany or uh, whatever you know uh, subjects we had physical sciences uh, physics chemistry physical chem physics chemistry biology then again within that there was a lot of uh, this thing this was for the ease of understanding and so that people can study further but end of the day what we have lost out at over the period of over the time was integration you know more, most of the students would take up uh, probably do not take up science is purely because they do not like to do diagrams or are scared of maths a lot of students who take up uh, biological sciences are usually because they do not like maths right we have it's always because we take decisions because we don't like something right so you know you may like something uh, you know very well but you may what you call like for me i have been always fond of a lot of subjects whether it is geography history and all so when i study it cumulatively it gives me a better and a bigger picture right so biogeographic it's high time we start letting go those uh, probably prejudices or biases that we had which was about specializing yes specialization is required i am not denying it you need to study further but if we can integrate it interdisciplinary approach because environment end of the day is all about multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary right or have i answered your question i'm sorry to certain extent yes so what we are looking at so or uh, we are at a forest we should not be talking about deciduous forest and I, no no no, no. not it only is, at a 
not only the land part, also the sky and uh, water part. Like we had a pond today and we looked at the ecosystem in pond, like dragonflies that way. So what you are suggesting is we should look at the interdisciplinary the aspect. Of so see, uh, when you talk about a pond or any ecosystem, why does that ecosystem exist? So if you look at it, it's mostly because of the physical factors which are there. The physical factors would include this thing. It, one of the major physical factors is also the location. Right? So how is the location? It, uh, what kind of soil is there? We are now getting into geography or getting into geology of it. Right? There is another uh, part that is precipitation. Now precipitation is influence or precipitation is the rain or snow or whatever is there. What kind of precipitation you get? Uh, for a place like Mumbai, you get it from rains. You get it from dew drops, right? Uh, but if you go up north, it would be probably your uh, snowfall, right? So each ecosystem, certain uh, factors would come into play, biomes or whatever it, it may, and that is what makes them distinct, right? Have I cleared yes. that particular question? Yeah, thank you. We move on. So. Uh, when it comes to ecosystems, there are certain things called as structure of ecosystem and function of ecosystem, right? So there are levels of organization. So you got producers, which are the basis of life, according to me. Consumers, who are herbivores, so they produce their own food. Again, uh, when we talk about producers, we mostly think about plants. Uh, they prepare their food through photosynthesis. That's one part. Though they are photosynthesis, they are uh, photoautotrophs. You also have got chemoautotrophs, certain bacteria which can produce their own food, but they use chemical energy out there, right? So you have got photoautotrophs, producers, or chemoautotrophs. You also have got consumers, herbivores, uh, people consume, assume them to be peaceful consumers. Uh, end of the day, they are predators in their own right because they predate upon the plants, right? Producers to that matter. You have the carnivores. Uh, they are the herbivore properly, uh, property uh, population controller. Or you have the omnivores who are the opportunistic feeder. Achha, ye nahi mila, wo khayenge, wo nahi mila, ye khayenge. Kind of thing. That is how it works. And you have the scavengers, which are the nature's municipality or municipal corporation or whatever. Cleaners. So each this thing has a role to play. Now, when you talk about function, the function of any ecosystem is flow. So flow of energy. So now if you look at it, structure of ecosystem is a level of organization. Then the flow of energy, it is about a uh, function of ecosystem is the flow of energy. What makes ecosystem different from environment? If you look at it, more or less ecosystem or environment ka dare, uh, why some look study jo karte wo same hota hai. What differentiates it is the flow of energy. How the energy flow, that is a major part. Right? So that is usually given by food chain, food web, and energy pyramids. Right? This is basic biology at work. And you have the biogeochemical cycles. Now, this is the interesting part of biogeochemical cycles. When we speak about biogeochemical cycles, uh, previously they were called as chemical cycles, geological cycles. Then they said, oh, it is not just geology. They we also have got chemistry involved. So they called started calling it geochemical cycles. Then they realized, oh, living organisms are very much an important part of the systems. So they've started calling it biogeochemical cycles. See, as people studied science is dynamic it keeps on evolving right the more evidence that comes across more you try to understand it it becomes better so the uh, definition to it, uh, today they are no longer called nutrient cycle they are no they were used to be called nutrient cycle then they were called as chemical cycles bio geochemical cycles today they are called as biogeochemical cycles so definitions change so food chain is nothing but the one that you have so you could have this kind of food chain grass rabbit fox or grass insect frog snake or any of the bird of prey so this is a very common food chain that i have taken up from one of the internet sites so let's face it you cannot have just one single food chain functioning at one time you would have an integrated network of food chains right so you could have sun which is the basis of all food chains grass just a second, sorry. Rabbit, fox becomes one food chain. Or you could have grass, insects, frog, snake, eagle, another food chain. 
grass, rabbit, snake, eagle, another food chain. Or you could have grass, insect, frog, eagle, another food chain. Or you could have grass, rabbit, eagle itself can become a food chain. Right? So this is when these food chains work together, what we get is food web. This is basic. Again, I keep on saying this is the basic uh, biological sciences or basic things that work. Are we clear up to this? So when you have yes. ecological when you have ecological pyramids, this is something that balances environment. Now, this is an, what the pyramid that we'll be discussing are ideal pyramids, ideal period, uh, conditions. You know, you would have the producers, herbivores, carnivores, and the top carnivores. That is what would form a pyramid. And the numbers would always decrease. That's why it's called a pyramid of numbers. It may not always be the same. In certain ecosystems, you may have more herbivores as compared to producers as well, number-wise. Certain times you may have more carnivores that can change, but to balance a pyramid, it has to be always in this format. But uh, with the energy flow and a lot of because see, it is not just one part. We don't just think about the lion, the zebra, and the uh, sorry, the zebra and the lion, or the zebra, uh, the buffalo and the lion. That's not the only part that we have to think about. You have to consider even the top predators in the form of dragonflies as well, right? So these can always change, right? The number wise. Then we have pyramid of energy, right? At every level, the energy is lost. So if it starts off with 10,000 calories, probably for the producers, a certain amount of energy the plants would utilize for their own growth. They would certain part of it for the flowering and everything, certain activities, right? So the energy that is available for the next thing is less. So 1000 calories is probably, let's assume 10% loss of energy, 10% uh, is available for the next level. Herbivores again would do their day-to-day -day activity, whether it is uh, moving around, finding their food, digesting their food, right, uh, reproducing. All these things require energy. So again, the energy is lost over there as well. So only 10% of it is available probably. I'm just taking 10% because it for the ease of understanding, right. Again, the carnivores, they would be feeding, they would also have to hunt and everything. So they would also invest certain amount of energy is lost. So what is available for the top predators, maybe even lesser. So this, you get pyramid of energy. Right. This is basic uh, ecosystem functions or basic thing, which probably most of you have studied in your school days. Right. Now comes the best part about it, biogeochemical cycles. Uh, you have got oxygen cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle. These are probably the three most important cycles that we have. The easiest one probably is your oxygen cycle where we have plants giving out oxygen with animals uh, using them and giving out carbon dioxide, which the plants use for photosynthesis, right? So this is the basic uh, oxygen cycle. I won't make, spend much time on it. Now, this is the carbon cycle, right? Interestingly, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle are interconnected, right? Okay. Now, when you look look at this particular diagram, most of the people are like, Why are they? Mujhe kuch samajh nahi aare. for the simplest way of understanding, if this is a land surface, you have the sun, plants, they give herbivores, and you have got the carnivores. Right, carbon dioxide. The plants take up, they take up water, they photosynthesize. The herbivores give out herbivores and carnivores both give out animals rather give out carbon dioxide. Right, so your carbon cycle. This is one part that is a part of oxygen I out here. Right, but the plants, animals, herbivore, carnivore, or any of the plants that die, the dead organisms, they again due to decomposition can come out as in the form of carbon dioxide or oxides of carbon and other formats or if they undergo certain uh, uh, what do you call it? environmental conditions under certain environmental con conditions they might convert themselves to fossil fuels whether the plants would con convert to coal the animals usually to petroleum products and the uh, gas products right these fossil fuels the human use and you get carbon dioxide again being emitted 
Now, carbon dioxide for the ease of it, you may have methane and other gases which are also emitted to the use, right? Now, is this cycle clear? This is probably much more easier or better to understand than the one that you have. We see the moment we see the diagram, half the kids are like, we'll close the book. That's pass over. Bhai, ye nahi ho hai. This again is your nitrogen cycle. Why is nitrogen so important? Yes, people. For growth of plants. Agreed. But why? What function does the nitrogen do? What you know, seventy five percent of Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. Yes or no? So what's the use of nitrogen for us? But we breathe in carbon dioxide, we are oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. Plants require carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. What's the role of nitrogen? Being the most abundant element, it parts, forms part of the nutrients and everything that we consume. How would it form a part of an important what kind of... or I mean, they are also part of our excretory system, let's say. Okay. But that has to enter our body through something. So yeah. So again, what function does it form, uh, have in our body? Because the body is excreting nitrates and nitrites, hmm. right? In what form does the, the do we use nitrogen? This is where your biochemistry kicks in. Proteins. Ah, proteins. Proteins are made up of tiny this thing called amino acids. Amino acids. Yes, amino acids, amino acids. Uh, the basic component for amino acids is nitrogen. Without nitrogen, you can't have amino acids. So if you need amino acids and proteins are called as building blocks of body, no nitrogen, no amino acids, no amino acids, no pro protein, no building blocks of body. Simple as that. See, again, as I said, integration is very important here. This cycle, we study it. Why study it, brother? In school, we study it. Why? Because it's given in the syllabus, we have to study it. What role it plays in ecosystem? This, if we try to understand, it makes our life easier. As a naturalist, as a nature interpreter, that is what your job is. To simplify, to tell people what exactly it is. So, again, the same land, nitrogen in the air has to be converted to nitrites and nitrates. The plants can use it, cannot use nitrogen. It has to be converted in that form. So here again, it has to be fixed. So it's usually done by microorganisms or it is done by lightning. Miller's experiment, remember? Where he introduced electric current. So in nature, the electric current comes through lightning. See, again, I am giving you some examples which we have learned before in your school, science, mein, evolution. Mein padha tha, right? Miller's experiment, where he added uh, certain uh, nutrients to water. And when he introduced electric current into it, it suddenly uh, over the time developed certain uh, what do you call it? Not exactly living, but it started developing protein like things and other st stuff out there. So, this was a kind of experiment that proved that nitrogen was required. You also have got the nitrifying bacteria, right? lightning So, you need to have something that will be constantly converting it. So, you have got the nitrifying bacteria coming into picture. So, again, the plants they pass on this nitrogen in the form of proteins to herbivores to carnivores they die through their droppings again we excrete nitrates and nitrites right so it can again be a part but if we remove all the nitrogen from the system is converted to nitrates and nitrates atmosphere ka balance bigadega the cycle is complete only when so you would need denitrifying bacteria which would do the job right Understanding why fundamentally these things happen. School me padata, sir, ye to amloko school me bi padata, college me bi padate amlok, firbi kyo ab barbar ye karo. My job is not telling you what exactly we are doing. My job is why this is happening. How this particular thing is useful for you to answer your questions that come to you when uh, you are there on the nature train. Why a particular thing is happening, right? Uh, sir, I have a question. 
Yeah, sure. So whenever we talk about uh, nitrogen fixation, as you said, that plants uh, cannot do uh, cannot convert nitrogen into nitrates, right? Yes, they cannot so use whenever... nitrogen. They cannot use Achha. nitrogen directly. Directly in okay. the form of nitrates and nitrites. So, so when you uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so whenever we are saying that this plant is work as a nitrogen fixation agent, so are uh, it root nodules support the growth of the bacteria which do the fixation or the plant is, uh, you know, capable enough to do that uh, conversion? Okay. Now, the nitrifying bacteria, you get two forms. One is free living form, right, which does not require any support. There are certain which are, uh, what you call, um, leap, uh, in conjunction with uh, plants, right, they are the non-free living forms. So, they are usually in the root nodules. So certain plants, what they do is, by nitrogen ke liye bar bar kon nitri nitri nitrates and nitrites ke liye. So they harbor bacteria which would act like uh, this thing. So they would provide them protection. They would provide uh, provide them shelter. And these uh, plants uh, bacteria would uh, convert nitrites to uh, sorry nitrogen to nitrites and nitrates. The plants uses it. See, bacteria would con convert more, and a part of it would be utilized by the plants. A sizable part of it rather is utilized by the plants out here right so this is an interaction in an ecosystem plant has adapted to create this kind of system bar bar aapko nitrogen fixation bacteria agar free flowing uh, free living hai nahi jata hai tumhare sath jao jo karna hai kar lo someone who is dependent will help you out you know forming these kind of networks or interrelationship is what ecosystem is all about have i answered your query so, so that means that plant has, does not have the capacity to convert nitrogen. No, it, no, it no. It is no, no. totally but, dependent on that bacteria. Right? Yeah, I say. But what it does, okay. it, it does provide those shelter. That's why those, uh, what we call nitrogen fixing plants, we call them. They, they are not nitrogen fixing plants per se. They have bacteria that can fix nitrogen. But it would produce in large numbers. So a plant can also use it in certain amount. It can use excess. So excess remains in the soil that the other plants can use. Okay. So we have ever means uh, I do remember that when I was in college, we learned about the names of the nitrifying bacteria. Yeah. So which one are these denitrifying bacteria? We never heard of them before. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I don't have the list of denitrifying. I don't remember them offhand right now. But there is a sizable uh, what you call list of denitrifying bacteria. They what they do is when they uh, prepare their food, they would use nitrates and nitrites in the reaction. And that would be converted to their form, and the nitrogen is released. Exact opposite fixation ke exact opposite karte hai wo log. Okay. So they yeah. also live in with some, you know, mutualistic type of relationship or free living. Most free of the denitrifying bacteria are free living, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, that particular aspect, I'm uh, what you call. Uh, I have I'm, I'm, uh, really what you call. I have not exactly looked into that particular aspect. Uh, you know, so if you, uh, as as I said, uh, I, I just as we said, so, uh, discussing right now, I just googled it for it. Theobacillus denitrificans karke hai. I just uh, yeah, that is what mm -hmm. Micrococcus denitrificans. Their job itself, the name itself shows that you know they are denitrifying. That's their job. That's the role. See, again, ecosystems is not just about identifying this, but the role. We always say it is the habitat or the living, not just the address, but also the occupation. Ecosystems may both important part of that, not just your address, where you stay, but also what you do, what is your occupation over here. Because right? whenever we are taught, we are always taught about the nitrifying bacteria. Because so we are uh, Ah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we were not never thought of. I think Gaurav also had some question here. Raising. Yes, Gaurav, really sorry. I just wanted to add something on what we have discussed so far. So, look, I also looked at, I mean, I thought of the bio, uh, biochemistry component as well. In yes. most of our, we use oxygen now. I mean, the current system, uh, but the bacteria and the plants, which were more primitive to that in evolution, they must have thought of using nitrogen as an electron transfer. In the electron transport chain or the electron carrier and because that gas was plenty and days those were there on the earth at that time then the later on the next set of plants came and 
they started using oxygen probably because of what the climatic changes that happened the amount of oxygen went up at that time so yep. their behavior actually is then started interrelating with each other and since they probably couldn't live on their own either they started living on the plants and they both of them evolved together so that each one of them is helped and now we have like larger trees and all which have now adapted to oxygen so they have now changed their pattern as well and also environmentally the lightning will probably provide you ammonia so that was the only source of nitrogen entering in the soil initially yeah. but now we have bacteria which have developed so that the entire cycle is complete probably uh, yeah we have started understanding it the cycle was already complete but yeah. we have a better understanding now See, if you look at our syllabi most of the time what we look study is uh, you know what is useful you know there's always a thing how useful is it for us people always say, what's the use if you go for a nature walk or nature trail when you take people the first question people you explain them about plants they would ask tell you what's the use right so we will talk about the medicinal use we can talk about it but it's all human centric if you look at that particular organism or that particular thing has a role to play in nature denitrification probably nitrification is important for us because fixation of nitrogen helps you in growing more crops that's why there has been more study on nitrification denitrification studies are on i'm not denying them and there's a sizable part because they are useful in pollution control especially nitrates nitrites when they excess they, they, they are there in excess you need to remove them denitrifying bacteria are deployed sizably now so this is where in it comes into picture where we are using uh you don't have to depend upon adding chemicals or something you're using a natural agent to control your pollution right bioremediation is what we call in that denitrifying bacteria are playing a major role out here right i hope i've answered my qu the question that you had yeah i don't so from the agricultural point of view if you think from human perspective yes we go on adding nitrogen because we think that the plants need nitrogen, plants need nitrogen. The concentration of nitrogen will go up and the cycle will disturb and yes. that is what has happened probably then we'll get less harvest and the plants will die out or something else will happen yes but just adding that to that yep so a small activity you can do that if you want to list out any three natural areas that you have visited you can list any three artificial parks parks that you have visited now this kind of activity you can always incorporate into your presentations because that is what would help you understand whether your presentation is able to reach out to people. Now, on an online presentation, I may not be able to be that effective, probably. Right? But when we have an offline presentation, when people actually do that particular exercise, they're like, okay, fine. And also gives you a bit of break for people wherein, you know, they are bar bar sunke pag gaya. Nobody likes to hear a lot. Right. Okay. Shall we move forward further? Yes. So if you look at the interaction between biotic and abiotic components, water is an essential require for every life form. Or you have air, which has this effect on soil, water, and organisms, both. Soil is living as well as non-living. It's a dynamic mixture, as we said. Or, and then we have the energy. Sunlight is a major source in any ecosystem. Of course, when you uh, look at the deep oceanic ecosystems where the sunlight cannot reach, that it has its own mechanism out there. right? That's why it is chemocentric more than photocentric. Right? As I said, chemoautotrophs and photoautotrophs, most of the chemoautotrophs are deep sea organisms. Right? OK. Moving further. So seasons, weather, and climate. Uh, weather and climate are same. Do you all agree? No. Uh, yes or no? Somebody said no. Anybody who say agrees with my statement? Yeah, it's wrong. Weather and climate are not same. Weather is a day-to-day -day phenomenon. So today's weather, it was sunny. Right, and long term average of atmospheric condition approximately 30 years, minimum 30 years is what is considered to be determined as weather. Right, change in light 
temperature and weather patterns throughout the uh, it changes right throughout the year these would change right so the basic difference is day to day phenomena and a long term atmospheric condition that is what differentiates climate and weather right now uh, weather patterns change throughout the year right right now we are supposed to have a winter season of course mumbai doesn't have a winter per se but yes is what we get seasons see uh, in winters the days are sh shorter whereas the night is longer during the summers you have the longer uh, days shorter uh, nights the temperature changes right all these uh, things make it into a season right so are we clear about weather season and climate yes uh, the 30 year is climate man uh, yeah. minimum 30 years okay. is what they say over the years if you look at uh, this thing if you can it can be even beyond that uh, okay. of course uh, see today we when we talk about climate change yes the climate is changing i am not denying that at all right so 30 years pehle jaisa climate tha waise aaj hai nahi hai me as a uh, person i know what uh, the weather was it, when i was a kid and what it is today the climatic conditions have changed i remember for me 15th of june meant going to the school or 13th or 15th of 13 to 15th of june was when our school would reopen and we would all be standing in a line wearing a raincoat or holding an umbrella waiting for a bus today 15 june ko barish nahi hota hai bahut rarely hota hai it is usually in the late june right so maybe the things have changed i am not saying it's just it could be just one or few few erratic change uh, weather phenomena we don't know it requires those studies right so there are five, five types of climates in india uh, rather world over climate tropical climate desert climate temperate climate polar climate and mediterranean climate now these are also called as biomes at times interchangeably used okay to be very honest, this is the broad this thing. There are the climatic types that we have in India. There are around what? 17 or 18 different climatic zones in India. Right? So, tropical climate, high humidity, high temperature. That's what defines it. So, perfect habitat for organisms. Plants compete for sunlight. Camouflaging is there. Right? So, when it talks about zero uh desert condition it's absence of water hot desert or cold desert we have just discussed it some time back so it will have extreme temperatures and you'll see excellent water conservation adaptation now look how the climate is influencing organisms in tro temperate uh, tropical climate you will more have cl camouflaging yes i'm not saying dem desert is camouflaging nahi hota. but the variety of camouflages that you would see in a tropical climate will not be same as in a desert climate the vegetation is scarce in case of desert climate. When it talks about the temperate climate, the al usually altitude of 1500 meters to 3000 meters in case of India. Go to Europe, that kind of climate can even be at the sea level, right? At a flat land. So it is uh, class, uh, put in by cold temperatures, coniferous trees. And usually in temperate regions, animals are known to hibernate, uh, hibernate, sorry, not hibernate, hibernate and uh, birds are known to migrate. Again, this is true even for polar regions as well. There is always an extreme, this thing, measure taken. So polar climate, extreme cold, life is possible only in short summers, otherwise life possibly neither. So hibernation and migration are the way out. Adaptation again is similar. Right? You have the Mediterranean climate. So the summers are long and hot summers and short cool winters. This entire, the Mediterranean Sea and the adjacent areas that has this kind of climate. This kind of climate is also seen in uh, many areas in India as well. Right? Nagpur is said to have Mediterranean type of climate. Right. 
the central india uh, nagpur and other this thing they are said to have uh, the cent uh, mediterranean type of climate that's why you look at it uh, oranges are not technically an indian fruit they were brought in from uh, mediterranean region italy and those those kind of thing greece which thrive in nagpur today right are we clear up to this part people Yes. yes so it impacts day to day changes uh, you know changes have an impact on plants and animals right so there's a during dawn you have the singing of birds at the peak this is called dawn chorus which is very common uh, phenomena that we hear right mornings you know butterflies are uh, uh, what you call are active in the late mornings we always call them sun worshippers you know? so they need to bask why because in the night it is cold so they they are cold blooded they cannot regulate their body temperature they take sun's heat and then they can move around so basking is very essential for these organisms afternoons again hot air currents are used by bird of birds of prey to move around what we call thermal drift lifts see how even the day to day pattern is changing for different birds or different organisms evenings you have the closings of leaves of leaf leaves of many of the trees right rain tree if you have a rain tree that's probably the most common tree around us if you have a rain tree around you observe now you will see that it has closed its leaflets all its leaflets so animals that are active during the evenings like bats uh, so we had been to bat garden today right in nights there are certain uh, animals that are active during night nights moths toads certain uh, toads shrews they are active during the nights nocturnal animals right so each of them have a definition kind of thing out here a role to play certain plants what happened was over the years there's a uh, over the time they realized there's a huge competition during uh, day time the predators are more so they started to turning nocturnal so certain predators are thought oh during the due day time there's a huge competition shall we start getting nocturnal so that we get uh we can start praying the competition is less as well as the predators that pre, uh, feed on them are less so bats probably evolved that way moths evolved on that particular mode uh, mode probably node note probably season changes have an impact on plants and animals so we have leaf fall when do leaves fall autumn autumn the winter season during the winter season that's what we have st study we study during our all our geography as well as uh, our science uh, textbooks tell us that you know deciduous trees lose their leaves during winters autumn so the movie movies like mahabate glorified autumn right where you see those orange and uh, red uh, brown leaves right this is a measure to overcome harsh season in temperate region this is true winters are harsh so the plants have to lose their leaves during winters come to tropical climate like india and it's not the winters that are in fact winters are pleasant what you have harsh is the summers so trees like red silk cotton tree palash all these lose their leaves during summers it is all about tiding the harsh condition in temperate region you have got the winters in tropical regions you have the summers where the leaf falls right flowering has to coincide with the proper season you know like summers you have red silk cotton that tree that flowers right why because one leaves nahi hai to jo jo kuch apna food jo ye rakha tha that day put it up into uh, flowering and the flowers turn to fruit through pollination and others once the fruit falls down because of the extreme heat uh, it uh, what you call dehiscence ho jata hai it, you have got uh, different me mechanisms of seed dispersal coming into picture summers are followed by rains the, the any plants don't have to depend upon somebody to water them the seedlings are taken care by the nature itself right so you may have monsoon blooms early monsoons like crinum lily edible chlorophytum these are very much common right early monsoons monsoon jaise start hoga within 7 to 8 days ya 15 days max you will find these plants and then they are gone the flowering is gone if you look at the nesting early summers you have got the purple sunbirds coming into play 
whereas late summers you have got crows in fact when the crows start nesting in india i always find within a, a week or 15 days you would have monsoons arriving that has been my observation right it's a what you call traditional knowledge that is there right uh, are we okay with what we have discussed so far people yes people yes sir okay so maybe a 5 minutes uh, more is what i would take and we'll conclude because i think we started a bit late okay. the migrations is what we have uh, uh, are there it's again it's a se it uh, season induced thing so summers you have indian pit tar that migrate it's a summer migrant you would find them do migrating during the summers in uh, mumbai you find them during summers they are migrating they are passage migrants in mumbai or in monsoon you have got the flamingos flamingos interesting this is an interesting part you know most people most people believe that flamingos migrate in winters yes they do migrate in winters to mumbai but most of the time important part is they migrate to overcome that harsh summers they uh, the flamingos that come to mumbai most of them are from run of kutch they come from kutch right the summers are harsh over there but the monsoons are much more pleasant so the flamingos in uh, mumbai they would or uh, which are there in other parts southern they which migrate southwards they would fly by flock back again to run of kutch or sambar lake in rajasthan uh, there is also a population that comes in from iran back there because the monsoons along with the monsoon winds they breed during monsoons right so migrations are seasonal winters you have got the bare headed goose that will uh, migrate so again a small activity if we just have to look at it this particular thing activity i would like your answers from you guys uh, can you tell me three festivals that are celebrated on the onset of different seasons holi is just before the summer starts yes right holi is just before the summer starts any other Not if I'm not wrong, one is uh, Pongal. Uh, sorry. Ah, Pongal. So somebody said Nadli Poli Ma. Yes, Nadli Poli Ma usually tells about the uh, monsoon uh, receding or retreating. So now it is open for the uh, fisher folks to get into the sea. It's a way of looking at it. Uh, Pongal, Onam, uh, Makar Sankranti. All these are there. Are they are harvest festival. so usually they either tell you the onset of winters or the uh, end of winters right makar sankranti again towards a time it's a time where the winter starts this uh, because it's a part wherein it talks about the change in the what do you call the movement of the sun from uttarayan to dakshinayan kind of thing that is what is signified over here right so this again talks about seasons changing so even our ancestors have been documenting these things and they are celebrating it you know when moment somebody you no know, let's just think about moment somebody says christmas what do we think about winters winters yes absolutely right people think about the uh, snow falling people talk about warm food cook the go to australia australia celebrates its uh, christmas and summers for australians it's a summer season hemisphere change ho gaya december is the start of summer season for australia uh, i don't know how many if you follow australian open it's in january and it's uh, seething summer over there in many places right peak summers mein hota hai almost kind of okay so that brings us to the last part of this particular presentation that is ecosystem services so ecosystem service is any good thing that the wildlife or ecosystem would do for the people you know it's a service that they would provide now this can be direct or indirect and can be big or small right now services we calling we are calling them services now because they 
are actually otherwise it's a part of their interaction it's a part of their life so there is something called as mea or ma at, at some places referred to as millennium ecosystem assessment it's a major united nations project so in the millennium what are the changes that have happened in the ecosystem services that are provided so it looks at how human actions affect ecosystems and human well being because we forget that we are a part of ecosystem so there are four main types of ecosystems making services available so food drinking water and other resources right plants animals water bodies or wetlands are an example regulating services climate regulation pollination waste management is a part of the regulatory services that they are the ecosystems offer cultural services now these are non material benefits right uh, okay anybody here who is interested in paintings yes people little bit sketching ah uh, not just sketching uh, you, yes you would do it and everything but if you observe paintings which are there paintings are modern art and everything that is there but if you look at the whole part of ancient art the tribal art what people call it you would just look at each tribe would have its own way of uh, what you call depicting nature or environment around it in so cave paintings which were there so can give us an idea about what was the the animals like in that particular era when the paintings were made bimbet ka ka cave paintings tell you about those right <laughs> or you have got petroglyphs in kokand in kokand there uh, ratnagiri and sindhurg you have got large plats uh, plateaus where there are actually animals etched animals and plants etched in the rocks the basalt rocks it's a rule it's an art that is being depicted what kind of animals and plants ex existed it's a kind of knowledge building right in one of the things it talks it, it shows animals that looks like a rhino in sindhurg and ratnagiri could it mean that sindhurg and ratnagiri had a population of rhinos we don't know or could it mean that the person who has drawn that thing has probably seen rhino somewhere it's a part of knowledge building exercise uh, again warli uh, paintings it's probably one of the most common paintings that you would see across right the triangles and everything everywhere it's commercialized like anything but you observe the warli paintings the plants that they would draw would usually be palms because for them the toddy palm is the most important part because where the warlis come from the entire dahanu palgar thane dalu palgar all the way to gujarat that entire belt you would find that they that's one of the most common tree toddy would provide them with uh, we we think of toddy as just as a fermented uh, alcoholic beverage but in the probably first uh, this thing it is also refreshing they would use at a fermenting agent so for them it plays a major this thing their uh, roofs could be thatched with the help of those leaf, uh, leaves that are there they would make brooms right so those were uh, but if you look at the gond this thing they come from central india they do have an overlap thing but majority of them they would find mahua being depicted in their paintings the leaves cultural services or they could be supportive services whether it is photosynthesis nutrient cycling soil creation this is something which human beings can't do we unfortunately things are self as god but we cannot do these services you need someone you need ecosystems to perform these services right are we clear up to this yes. so this is an interesting part you know which i had made long time back probably when i was with bnhs i had made this uh, bill this is uh, the source is of course constanza robert constanza and uh, his team it's a huge project that happened uh, in 1997 they published it in nature it's an amazing paper that is there if you ever get a, a hold of this paper read about it it says that it was 33.3 trillion worth of ecosystem services is provided by ecosystems in 1990s right that was more than 
all the uh, GDP of the entire world put together. That's almost two times around that time. Right. Uh, 2006, they had another study of such kind. Robert Constanza and his team. They found the value has increased. Why? Because the services, service providers have decreased. So the pre pressure is more. Demand and supply. Economics at work. And again, should we decide to play, pay service tax? GST pay karne ke liye abhi hum log rote hai. 5% and everything. Imagine what at what rate can we pay and how much we can pay. We cannot probably. That's why we need those the ecosystem to function well. That's why the whole part where we are talking about environment studies or our environment, this is the key part that we forget. Right? With this, I end my presentation. Thank you so much for being a patient audience. Uh, any questions or doubts that you have, feel free to ask them. To conclude, like what can we do to improve our environment or ecosystem when we are looking at, say, Ambuli Biodiversity Park or some areas that we live around? So what yeah, can so, we do? So we are basically trying to add to uh, plant flowers, which we feel happy about, or they're very attractive or uh, useful for the visitors to come, but not for the environment as such. So yeah. what can we do so, to improve that? So if you look at this particular aspect, when I talk, speak about these aspects, when we talk about uh, Ambuli Biodiversity Park, just look at it. It's not just concentrating on one aspect of biodiversity. There's a lot of thought that has gone into I hats off to the I, I Nature Watch team for that. What they have done, they have taken into consideration bats, they have taken into consideration butterflies, they have taken into consideration bug hotel kind of thing that they have created. They have taken into consideration a lot of there. There's a balance of uh, what do you call native as well as um, your exotic flora, flora and fauna. Both are private right? because end of the day, we can't do anything about a lot of these exotic flora and fauna that is there. They are now become a part of our ecosystems. Probably we have to learn to live with them. Yes, eliminating out certain e exotics often helps, but we have to again take into consideration the costs that it would be, uh, it would cost, right? Like uh, you know, to bring that just to give you an example, when we don't think about the ecosystem services, Finding Nemo, the movie, explains a lot about the whole uh, marine biodiversity that is there, and it's an amazing thing to study marine habitats. Uh, Finding Nemo, if you anybody has watched the movie, Finding Nemo. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the message that the Finding Nemo gives? As I remember, the last one, the uh, like the there's new one finding uh, something a new fish like second season. Okay. So there's Finding Nemo. There's Finding Dory. Okay. So, I remember Nemo's name. Dory is there. So she finds uh, her way by small, small things like stones and uh, plants. So okay. it's their home. Like, Most importantly, if you look at Finding Nemo, the underlying message is we should say no to pet trade. It talks a lot about pet trade, way the animals are taken in uh, from the wild and introduced into aquarium. That movie comments on pet trade, interestingly. Unfortunately, what happened was after finding Nemo, demand for clownfish, which is a species which Nemo belongs to, as well as blue tang, which is Dory, both increased. This is where we fail in our ecosystem services, understanding what exactly are we looking for. With clownfish, it is still more easier because then it's easy to breed in captivity. Blue tang cannot be. So they have to be get brought in from wild. So understanding what role that particular this thing plays, why is it so, that may, plays a major role. You know, we always, it, I, I always I give an example in the morning of Dr. Arak Barucha, who always say there's Eve and there's Eve and there's wow or awe. Oh. That if you can uh, channelize with the students, it can. But for us, what we can do, well, the best thing is probably not intervene at all. 
bit environment. Uh, people always say, sir, you have a blank habitat, you have to do it, what can we do? You have to stay in the same way, don't do it. Nature will take its own course. But of course, we have reached a level where we cannot say allow the nature it's alone to take. It needs our helping hand as well. So things like biodiversity park, having small refuges around you are going to help. Right. A lot of these uh, today, most of the people who would go out in nature for nature photography, if nature photography is picked up big time. It's a great thing. Unfortunately, none of this helps in the cause of conservation. There is very few cases that help in the cause of conservation. Otherwise, it is all about what you post on the social media. We need to understand why we are doing certain things and what is the outcome. Yes, I hope I've answered the question, Gaurav. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, anybody else any, has any more questions or anything that you would like to add that any of your experiences feel free? Okay. Uh, any feedback on your side for the presentation? What should have been, what should not have been kind of thing? I understand it was a very basic presentation, but uh, the whole idea of naturalist training has been that people should know at least the basics. Brushing up the basics, developing on your basics is what is required. Right? Yes, sir. At least, sir, because when you are in a type of so, you know, nature trade, you, we should start from means what I feel that before starting about what they look at this bird, look at this tree and everything, we can start with how this evolution process has begun. Means how the soil has been formed, then how the trees came, then how the birds came means if we are engaging any sort of students and also that will be very helpful for them to understand the whole concept. You know, so for that thing, this all basic things are needed. Because just not showing a tree, its characters is what is needed in naturalist. But about what we have learned before, because many of the people know these things that this is a plant, this is all. But what is this branch about? Why is leaf is like this? Why is venison is like this? Why is uh, margin is called baby dented? So these all things we have. हम लोग ने बहुत रखता किया है सब किया लेकिन on practical notes we don't know many of these things and. Uh, I do remember an uh, example of a friend who used to take trail in BNHS. So, uh, his trail was like this. He used to start with the evolution. So, he used to uh, give an expert that if we are in the course of evolution, then how will it And he used to end with the end species, which is now, with humans. So, like this, I feel that the basics are the basics that we brush up in nature trail. Mein add karke Yes, because I, if you ask any of us, uh, you know, um, uh, more than, you know, talking about what could this, is, if you know, have your basics correct, you can always answer any damn question that is asked. Right? Yes, there would be certain times where you might have this thing and it is no harm in saying that I don't know or I don't remember. We are humans end of the day. We are not gods. Right? This is one of the biggest problem that we face that people believe that we are gods. We are not. As I said before, we are no longer adaptable creature that we were once upon a time. We have started changing the climate or weather. Of course, if you look at climate change, people talk about global warming, climate change. Global warming is very much a natural phenomena, by the way. Uh, we The earth oscillates between two epochs, warm epoch and cool epoch, cold epoch. We had a ice age and gradually we are moving towards warm epoch. The climate is... The weather, the climate over the years is supposed to get warm, right? So that is not a problem. So natural health, why are we so chill chilly? It is not that it is getting warm. What the problem is the speed at which it is getting warm. What would have happened in probably a few thousand years or a few hundred, uh, this thing is happening in a few years time. Since industrial years, uh, uh, revolution, it is what? Hardly 200, 250 years on a higher side. And the changes that are there are, would have probably taken around 10,000, 20,000, 25,000 years. That has happened in that short a period of time. And that is alarming. For us to adapt, for animals to adapt, for plants to adapt. 
for earth to recover itself that is what makes environment education so much important right uh, so shall we end at this particular note people or would you like to, anybody would like to add anything thank you gaurav thank you arsh Yes, sir. Thank you so much sir, for all the knowledge and brushing up with all the basics which I have learned before. So it was really nice to get through all this because with the due course of time, we forget all the back things which are bit are and which are really very important while you know uh, going with the nature trail and all. Uh, so it was really very helpful to go through all that which we have you studied and yeah. So thank you so much for. being taking the trail also in the morning i was uh, not in that position to attend the trail because uh, today was my working i really wanted to you know get into the trail but anyhow it has gone but this session was very we can have a few more trails not a problem because let's see some way or the other we would have i would try to get uh, yes. back to the field let's see how it works sure sir thank you Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.